Sure is going to be uh, really fun to watch tonight. And I'm right with you on that. Of course, on the other side, the Watertown Wolves look to be starting number one, Jeremy Pominville. Pominville got the win last night. He's got a goals against average, a little inflated as he only did allow one goal, but he does have a 3.0 goals against and a 9.33 save percentage. Uh, a little bit hard to control those numbers when you only play 20 minutes, but uh, the average is the average there, Steve. So oh, absolutely. we'll have to see exactly how Watertown comes out. Of course, Watertown with an of course, a little bit of knowledge of the enforcers playing them as so much last year. And of course, their coach this year, having assistant coached the enforcers all the way to the FHL championship last year. Yeah, absolutely. And and I think that's going to be, you know, interesting to see that play out tonight. I mean, you you don't uh, you don't have uh, your your A1 starters going up against each other here to start things off tonight, but uh, still going to be a, a great matchup nonetheless. And you know what? We can talk matchups all day long, but you know what? Hockey is back. Hockey That's all that matters back. tonight. And that is for sure. Hockey being back. Uh, it's been the message since Elmira opened the doors to First Arena one more time. That has been the uh, the true calling once again as hockey was sorely missed that one year that it did not take place. And now we are very excited to get it going yet again. We do have some hometown fans. We saw the question there on YouTube trying to get a good zoom in for you straight across behind the enforcer's bench. And of course, right below us here as well, a lot of green in the audience tonight, Steve. Yeah, that's what I noticed uh, when I first walked in the house tonight is, uh, you know, the uh, I, I looks like uh, our friends from the Morrison crew is uh, uh, ran up I-81 to join us up here. And, uh, you know, it kind of reminds me a little bit of the uh, the playoff game that we had here a little bit ago, uh, you know, at the end of last season. It was start off the 2018 2019 playoffs uh you know having uh, our Elmira fans travel up north here to uh to take it in well and we appreciate of course the constant support we get anywhere we go uh we go all over America it seems anymore we'll be heading to Georgia the second week of the season but uh well we started off against those pesky Carolina Thunderbirds so it's going to be an interesting battle especially when you consider there's a little bit of payback owed they celebrated with the cup on our ice yes absolutely and I know that uh I know that that sat, you know, didn't sit right with a lot of our players and fans, and rightfully so. Uh, and that's that's why I say, man, I am just looking so forward to next weekend, uh, our home openers Friday and Saturday at the Loud House. And that will be exciting. Now, we want to mention, too, that is the only time we will see Carolina at Elmira all season long. Yeah, that was interesting uh, to hear that in the offseason that Carolina was not going to be in our division. Um, you know, what was interesting was when they announced that at the first arena, they uh, when they announced that, some fans were like, oh, yeah, that's a great thing. Other fans were like, oh, no, man, those are like our rivals now. We want to, you know, we want to do this. We want it. We want them to come to our house and and go to their house and take care of business. But um, yeah, divisions are going to be set up a little different this year. They certainly are. And we'll see a lot of Watertown, Danbury, uh, Delaware, and a little bit less of Mentor. We'll see them quite a bit towards the end of the season. Uh, but Mentor is part of our division. So uh, of course, the playoffs changing a bit this year too. We've got three rounds of best of three play. So that's going to be even oh, more entertaining yeah. uh, when you think about having to play two against an in-division rival and then one hopefully, <laughs> against yeah. a Western Conference rival. Yeah, and and if you think about the finals and, and even the uh, the first round of the playoffs last year, I mean, a best of three as opposed to that best, that would have made things really interesting. Certainly would have. And, of course, those uh, those different, uh, different statistics uh, and overtime goals that may or may not have gone into the net are, of course, very important when you come into a best of three series. Uh, as your enforcers take the ice for the first time, here in 2019-2020. And we're giving you the chance to take the look there live. As everything will be getting going here shortly here. And the Elmira Enforcers will be excited to get back underway. And like we said uh, all throughout this pregame show here. There's going to be a lot of battling here tonight. The Enforcers have something to prove. They're fighting for jobs at this point. Nothing has been set in stone. We do not have a finalized roster. We will not have one until Monday. And a lot of these guys that are skating on the ice right now are trying to be a part of that roster. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's what they said. There's about six decisions left to make. And, uh, you know, that a lot of that's going to ride on tonight. You know, you, like I said, you don't want to scoff at a preseason game as, oh, it's not an important game. But, you know, for some of these guys on the ice tonight, this is their most important game that they've played up to now. 
It certainly is. And we want to thank everybody else who came out for the inner squad scrimmage games. Those were uh, certainly a blast as well. So we want to thank everybody who came down to First Arena for that. Of course, now we're going to take a moment, step aside. We do have to handle the national anthem and the pregame ceremonies here from Watertown. And we will be back with the first period of action live on Mixler.com and YouTube. Thirty-four years experience in helping our clients get the best insurance coverage possible. We're local and we're trusted. We've built our business on the idea that customers should be treated like family. At the Decker Agency, we offer free quotes and consultations. Our clients can build their coverages to best suit their needs and budget. Please stop into our office at 416 East 14th Street in Elmira Heights or call us at 607-734-1100 to schedule your free consultation today. And like the Mary and M. Decker Agency LLC on Facebook. At the Decker Agency, we help you protect what matters most. Great teammates can be hard to find. The ones who give their all. Every bit of heart, talent, and commitment. When you find those players, you know they're special. They're great athletes and friends. They can help your team win. So, should it matter that they're a certain race, a different religion, where their family is from, or whether they're straight or gay? And you can play. We think an athlete's contribution to a team sport matters more than any other way you might look at an athlete from the perspective of a teammate or a fan. You Can Play is committed to making locker rooms safe and sports venues welcoming for all athletes based on their heart, talent, and commitment, and nothing else. Because if you can play, you can play. Visit youcanplayproject.org for more information about how including all athletes for who they are encourages honesty and teamwork and makes all sports better. If you can play, you can play. Hello, this is Ahmed Mahfouz, captain of your Elmira Enforcers. If you're looking for something to do when the Enforcers are on the road, come on down to the rec rink and take part in the rock and skate. It's a great night out with friends, family, and other great Enforcers fans. At just $5 for admission and $5 for skate rental, it's a real power play every Friday night, 8 to 10 p.m. Go Enforcers, go. And with that, the enforcers are back on the ice, and we are ready to go. Some good news uh, for one of our YouTube fans that are watching along. Uh, Mitch Atkins is actually on the team. I'm not sure why we're not coming through now on Mixler. We're having some multifaceted issues here tonight there, Steve. Uh, <laughs> not sure what is happening here, having... Some issues going back and forth between the YouTube and the Mixler, but we want to thank everybody on YouTube, all 55 of you. Uh, so we're very happy to see all of you tuning in. We're going to get right back onto the air here for our friends on Mixler.com. Thank you so much for tuning in. As the Enforcers get set, the puck is dropped, and the Enforcers have won their first faceoff of the new season. Starting to work it up the ice as they get going. Trying to cross the center ice line. There was Nathan Pellegra. He'll swing back and circle around, passing off to his defense. As now, once again, the Enforcers getting going. We'll try to get this camera working for you a little bit here, folks. As Pellegra passes over to Yarwood. Yarwood moves it up the ice. Fed back through by Sean Reynolds and deep into the zone. So the puck played down low and worked around again as Connor Fries went and kept it down deep. Pellegra will chase and again working down low. Pellegra trying to work the puck out front. He loses control, and Watertown picks up and moves it back along. Still kept in the zone momentarily, but now it's moved out, coming back the other way. Kalinin drops a wide pass shot, and that's in the back of the net. Watertown scores the first goal of the game, and that did not take long. 46 no. seconds. No, they really stretched that out there, John, uh, and Kalinin uh, with a pretty clean shot there on passing him. So, unfortunately, uh, not the way Pass wanted to start this game. Uh, obviously, the first goal of the preseason going against the Enforcers. And now it'll be up to that second line to start moving along here. Coming in, Hudson Michaelis to take the draw. He will push that one back. The Enforcers win the second draw of the year as well. Move back along. Scropolis will just dump it down deep. Playing it off the other way, Austin Petrie wraps the puck around the boards. It's stolen back by the enforcers, trying to work it up the sideboards. Again, taken away, worked back down as Watertown breaks out of the zone. Puck is picked off and moved back in the other way. On so No, there's going to be a penalty call for a trip. This one's going to go against the enforcers. So a 33.3 on the power play last night for the Watertown Wolves. Yanni Skropolis will take the seat. And now the enforcers will have to see how good their penalty kill is. 
penalty kill was a shining spot for the uh, enforcers last year, Steve. No, it certainly was, and and that's what you need, and certainly that's what helped down the stretch in that playoff run. As now the first faceoff won by the Wolves as they take it back and start to try to set it up down here. This is Michael Desjardins. He turns around, passes back, and leaves. As again, Watertown trying to force the puck down low. Puck is moved back deep, and Sean Reynolds will get it out very quickly. So puck will have to be played by Jeremy Pominville back in his own zone. He drops and leaves it there for Marvin Powell. Powell sends it northbound for Austin Petrie. Petrie has his pass intercepted, trying to move it back the other way. This is Connor Fries. Fries drops back to the defense, and it's dumped all the way back in. Has to be played there by Pominville yet again. Pominville leaves it back behind the net for Powell. Powell trying to get something set up and get it out of his own zone for the moment. As the enforcer is trying to pick off the puck, still having some trouble as it's moved back into their own, the own zone by Boris Kochkin, who now turns one over. The enforcers pick it back up, moving it back along. Trying to play it down deep was Michaelis, but he was having some trouble as he was harassed there by the Wolves. Enforcers really doing a good job on the power, on the penalty kill yet again. Puck moved up the sideboards, broken back up. Powell has possession and moves it back across. Wolves still trying to get into the offensive zone. They have had no luck in that so far here on the power play. And Cameron Yarwood doing what Yarwood does there. Cameron certainly known for his hitting ability, and we love to see it in Elmira. As once again, the puck has moved along. So the Wolves trying to... Remaining on the power play, they have a one nothing lead. As a stretch pass comes through, and the Wolves finally into the shot. That one's kicked aside by Passingham. Puck is moved along again. Another attempt shot to nothing. The enforcers wanted to be Steve. No, not at all. The power play was just about. So apologies about the uh, the shakiness of the camera. I we're literally using a webcam up here just to try to show you guys the game, but we thank you all for tuning in there by Sherman Lovett. Yarwood will feed it. Comes up with the save. Good work there by Passingham to get that one deflected. As now the enforcers will have another draw deep in their end. And like we said, this is battling for spots. The enforcers are going to have to pick it up here, Steve. Absolutely. As... As now Sherman Lovett has possession, trying to work it up through, does get it into the neutral zone, but not able to do anything with it there as Dustin Pierce had some trouble. Puck is dumped back in by the Wolves. Playing it back around, Sherman Lovett feeds it up the boards. Picked up there and moved out by Pierce. That puck is touched by the Wolves' defense. Broken up. Here comes Scropolis. Scropolis through. Shooting scores. Young for the Elmira Enforcers. Welcome to Elmira. Yeah, uh, makes up for it with I, the goal. I was just going to say a little redemption there for Scropolis, <laughs> no doubt. So the Enforcers will get themselves right back into this game, 2-1. to one. That was, in fact, the Enforcers' first registered shot on goal as well, Steve. So, and, and the Enforcers get the face off here. As they move it back down in, another attempt tried to feed Scropolis out in front. Scropolis had overskated, and now the Wolves will turn it back out the other side. Again, the puck has moved back to the neutral zone. Enforcers trying to reclaim possession as the Wolves will end up taking it into the Enforcer's zone where it's broken back up again. Played down low by Igor Babian. Babian drops back for JT Walters. Walters looking back behind the net, trying to find a lane. Walters takes it now back behind the net again. Couldn't find a lane to get through. The Wolves playing some uh, solid defense here in the offensive zone, as now Babian will start out. Babian over the blue line. Looking for someone to drop to. Ends up shooting himself. Goes just wide of the net. As once again, the enforcers will flip one into the Watertown Wolves bench. And we'll get a reset. So, Steve, you like to see it so far. The uh, enforcers getting right back into it. We're just almost five minutes into this game. But a two-to-one score, that's uh, a little surprising for enforcers fans, maybe. Yeah, and, and for Scropolis being new on the team, you like to see him come in and be that firecracker to get things going. Well, Pelegra just moved it into the zone, kept it there momentarily, and now the Wolves fighting to try to get it back out. As that one will roll to center ice, picked back up here by Sean Reynolds. Reynolds busts in, top of the circle, firing, and an easy save there for Jeremy Pominville. That was a good spot for Reynolds here last season, if you remember back to the playoffs. That was kind of Reynolds' sweet <laughs> spot over there on the ice. 
I don't know if Reynolds has a sweet spot or if just everywhere on the ice <laughs> tends to work for Sean Reynolds. He, Absolutely. He certainly loves to fire the puck away as Reynolds wins the draw back, picked up and moved back down deeper. Pellegra will swing in. A little surprising to see Reynolds take the face off when you got a natural centerman like Pellegra there. Right out in front, another shot. That one pops up and into the netting as an excellent opportunity there for Connor Fries. So faceoff looks like it'll be coming to the right-hand side of the netminder. As we'll see what the uh, enforcers can do. Trailing 2-1. to one. Now you see Pelegra in there at the center ice circle. He won it back, but the Wolves managed to gain possession and start back out the other way. Another shot on Passingham. Easily turned aside as Reynolds picks up and moves back out to center ice. Almost too many men. Smart move not to touch the puck, but the uh, almost attempt there will negate the icing call. So Wolves taking it back behind. As once again, trying to play it off, Powell still holding possession back there. Coming back around, trying to work it out of the zone. Now he will get it out as Yarwood went down to his knees. Wow. And now the enforcer is coming back with numbers. Breaking into the offensive zone, a little bit of miscommunication there. But they will move the puck even deeper. Still trying to play it through. Enforcers struggling to uh, get this zone possession underway. As now again, shoving down there into the boards. The enforcers still battling. One thing you can say about this team, they consistently battle. That they do. As now again, this is Martin over and just off sides, according to the linesman. So they'll have to reset. As now again, 2-1 to one the score, 13.46 to go here in the first period. And Steve, we've seen uh, quite an interesting start and then uh, hopefully the enforcers start to settle down here as well. I think so. I mean, and, and the other thing I would say, John, is the scoreboard really doesn't reflect how long they've had the puck down here in the zone. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, I, I think they just got to keep working it. Well, we'll have to see what they can do here as the enforcers take possession, wrapping around, trying to send back to Yarwood. Yarwood winds up, fires, and that one's turned aside as, once again, the enforcers battling deep in the zone. Enforcers have done their part to get the puck deep. The shots on goal, though, are where they're lacking. Yarwood takes possession, firing, and that's right into the leg pad as Hudson Michaelis tried to uh, step in the way of that one. The Wolves will turn it around and go the other way. That one broken up just inside the blue line, but the Wolves take possession. Catching the Enforcers in a bit of a change, that puck is dropped, and big contact there by Cameron Yarwood as the Enforcers still trying to battle. Wolves have possession. Another shot goes just wide. Passing him, having some trouble uh, finding his game legs at the moment. Yarwood chasing after it now. Again, the puck is moved along the boards. Picked back up and out of the zone. Yanni Skropolis, the enforcer's lone goal scorer, flips it back in and will go complete the change for that line. So the Wolves take possession back behind the net. Sean Reynolds playing some defense back there. Right to JT Walters. Flipped in front and almost into the net. That one just wide. As now again... Enforcers still battling. This is Nathan Pellegra. Pellegra certainly looks a, a little bit bigger than last year, too, if uh, my eyes are not deceiving me here, Steve. Uh, I think you're right on that. Certainly had a good off-season workout from the looks of it. Right back, speaking of, <laughs> as now he had a little trouble controlling, and the Wolves will move it back out. Puck is played through, and the Wolves into the zone, firing over the top of the net. That one comes all the way back to center ice. Pellegra trying to get his legs under him. Couldn't quite catch up to that before the Watertown defense. Watertown trying to work it through. The puck comes loose, but Watertown able to jump right back on top of it. That's Schumann Colchi. Colchi, I believe, is the <laughs> correct pronunciation there. Excuse me. As now again, puck is flipped back out, and Watertown on the move. Watertown dumping the puck in deep as JT Walters will go back to play back behind his own net. Walters starting back out the other way. He feeds it northbound as this is Blair Zentz, fresh out of the pro placement camp, trying to find his spot on this roster. Puck has moved back along again. Still having some trouble managing the puck. Watertown gets it out and dumps back deep. Watertown able to play with a lead here. Although it's a little bit early in the game, you're a little surprised they're not looking for some more offense rather than the dump-ins already this early. Puck has moved right back out to center ice. Powell looking to get in. He takes a hit. Now the puck has moved into the zone. JT Walters will chase. Walters comes away with it, flips it up the boards. Can't come away with it again as Zentz had the puck taken away from him. Watertown now circling the net. Looking around is Lucas. Lucas firing it wide. That one goes all the way back to the point. Still trying to push it out. Zenz could not come up with it. And Watertown maintains the zone. Broken up again by JT Walters. More good defense from the enforcers. We've seen a lot of it so far. Nice play there by Pierce. As once again, Watertown maintaining this uh, good box-like formation here. 
even five on five, as that one will come out to Zents. Zents tries to gain the red line, and he will dump in, and the enforcers will get a line change. Puck played off there by Pominville, almost to the halfway point of the period. As taken down, looking in front, another attempt shot, and couldn't quite bury it. A wide open net for Hudson McMichaelis, and he could not put the puck into it. In there and getting physical, perhaps a little frustrated as Scroplis pushing the puck up the boards. He will get it with him. He'll dump in and fed back up the boards. Puck, a little bit of a mishandle there by the the trouble as a Reynolds picks back up to the net. Yarwood will get there to keep it in. Feeds it all the way across. Reynolds again with it, looking back towards the point. Pass back. Back across to Yarwood. Yarwood looking, firing. That one will be turned aside by the netminder. As again, enforcers shoved down there. Still no penalty called. Enforcers coming around, looking, firing. Another attempt shot and misses again. Good shoulder save there by the netminder, Pominville. So, Puck rolling up the boards. Another attempt. Seeing a lot of offensive zone time now from the enforcers. As again, Wolves, as soon as I say it, the Wolves pick up the puck and move it back out the other way. Fighting for it there, Shafara. Shafara is going to take a penalty after the two that weren't called. <laughs> and they're going to call that. Yarwood is livid. And he is letting the referee know it. So Shafara is going to take the penalty. Mafus is going wild on the bench as well. So not happy at all. As the enforcers yeah. will go back on the penalty kill. Mafus barking his displeasure from the bench. As the two no calls. Certainly not going to make him happy here. Trying to lead the troops tonight. A uh, little surprised we're not going to get that, uh, that time out. Here before the penalty kill kicks off. So apparently we're just going to roll. As Watertown... And the enforcers battling in front of the net. JT Walters certainly throwing his body weight around. The Wolves taking possession and working it around, trying to get something set up. You remember the first power play, Wolves weren't even able to access the zone until the very end. They were able to come through with a goal with four seconds to go. So they are one for one on the night, clean and across. Again, Walters digging for it, having some trouble as he continues to look around. Enforcers employing that diamond box there. Again, right out in front and again, can't bury it. Passingham couldn't figure out where the puck was. The puck crossed through the crease three times, but still luckily uh, maybe he built up a snow mound like Marc-Andre Fleury the other night. As now, the enforcers try to break out of the zone, but it's chopped away from Hudson Michaelis and now tripped over the blue line there by one of the Wolves players as Michaelis will chase. Fans here in Watertown looking for a penalty on JT Walters for some incident right in front of the net. But the puck will squirt back out to center ice. Powell and his defensive partner play catch as the Wolves now break back in. A lot more success getting into the zone this time, Steve. Yeah, you know, they're uh, controlling the puck a lot better than they did on the last power play, for sure. As now Powell looking to set it up. Passingham has an eye on him. That puck Whoa. skittered right by a stick. And Pellegra will dump it all the way down, and the enforcers will get a change with seven minutes to go in the first period, 30 seconds remaining in the power play. That was a really good look there by Watertown. It certainly was. You certainly can't give Watertown too many opportunities here early on. Don't want to get that, uh, that gap any bigger than the one it's at right now. So the puck slides deeper into the zone, fed all the way around, and again, the enforcers going to battle here on the penalty kill. Back behind the net, looking for a lane out to the front of the net, but a sliding save there coming from Bryce Martin as it goes right back to the Watertown defense. You hear the goalie swatting his stick. Passing him, turns one aside. Pellegra picks it up. He looks, tries to feed it out to Solon Shafara, who's chasing. That one, the goaltender was looking for icing, but Shafara was certainly going to beat that one out as now the puck will get back to center ice. The Wolves breaking into the zone anyway, still having to chase it, having some trouble getting in there. Jordan Clark was chasing that puck. As now again, the Wolves trying to keep the offensive zone time up as the puck is slammed back to the blue line, gotten out, but no further as Dustin Pierce was unable to gain control. Puck goes all the way back in, passing him, shrugging his shoulders there. Not sure uh, what the commentary was behind that. As the Wolves, again, lurking in the offensive zone, can't quite complete the pass 
as again the puck moves back behind around the net. Wolves trying to set something up. Big windup, a shot, kick save there by Passingham. 537 left to go in the first period. Again, puck is moved along the wall. Another attempt here for Powell up at the blue line. He swats it down deep below the goal line, and the enforcers pick it back up. Moved around, trying to find a way out of the zone as Jordan Clark continues to play pitch and catch with his defensive partner, and that's Igor Babian. Babian passes it up all the way down, and the enforcers will get a line change. This one fed around the boards. Going to come all the way out to JT Walters at center ice. Walters, who was a stalwart back on defense for the Enforcers after the fourth goal or fourth game of the year, excuse me, feeds it forward again, right back in and on net. But Pominville jumps on and covers it up again. So with 4:54 going in the first period, we will have our break. We'll be right back here on Mixler.com. to schedule your free consultation today. And like the Marion M. Decker Agency LLC on Facebook. At the Decker Agency, we help you protect what matters most. This is JT Walters with your Elmira Enforcers. I love getting out in the community here in Elmira, but I also know it can be hard to find things to do. We at the Enforcers have a great fix for that. With deals for groups of 10 or more, Enforcer games can be a great and affordable time for you and your friends to come out and enjoy downtown Elmira. Go Enforcers, go. All right, and that was J.T. Walters uh, letting you know about all the great things to do in down in downtown Almira. Now the Enforcers have an offensive zone faceoff, and Steve, uh, the last five minutes have certainly not gone their way. No, not at all. And, you know, the good thing is that it was a positive penalty kill. Uh, no goals put up on the board there by Watertown. They certainly had a few good looks. But uh, let's see if we can close this last five minutes out. Hope so. 4.50 left to go in the first period. Two to one deficit the Enforcers are facing. As now Watertown moves it back through and into their offensive zone. Shot and a glove save there by Passingham. He's not going to miss many of those. No, no, that's that's Passingham's bread and butter right there. Great grab there. He is a big goaltender, and he <laughs> he certainly takes up a large portion of the net. As now Hudson Michaelis wins the draw. Right back again and moved along. JT Walters has possession. Walters looking up ice. Feeds it along to Scropolis, feeds it over the boards. And again, the puck bouncing all around. Michaelis puts it in front, couldn't connect with Scropolis. Puck is still loose. Scropolis hammering at it. And the referee blows the whistle despite, from our angle, I could see the puck <laughs> laying there in no, the goal crease. just laying there, yeah. I thought that was a little early. Well, it is what it is. So 4.23 to go in the first period. 2-1 to one right now in favor of the Watertown Wolves. Sean Reynolds right back out there now. Reynolds loses that draw. The Wolves will start it up the other side. Cameron Yarwood playing defense. And that one broken up quickly as Kurt Connor Fries gets the puck moving. Sean Reynolds cut off a little bit there by Powell. Puck is moved right back to center ice. He will dump the puck in. Powell takes possession again. He looks for a little bit of a stretch. That one chopped out of the air by Pellegra, but it's picked back up by Kalinin. Kalinin puts it across and going wide now as knocks the net off the net was completely knocked off but no penalty call apparently a little surprised it seems as though the enforcers have been taking the brunt of the penalty calls here tonight thus far so we'll have to see uh if that evens out a little bit here despite the uh, opinion of the home working crew as now once again a little bit of contact back we get to see a power play here tonight as once again Nathan Pellegra starts back out the other way flips it forward a little bit of trouble controlling there puck is finally moved Sean Reynolds has it firing and a save there once again now the puck will be changed that is what you like to see from Sean Reynolds as Reynolds works there for Pominville the other way breaking into the zone stealing through it's broken up quickly and Sean Reynolds will flip it back out one more time Gets it as far as the blue line, and then it will be sent into the opposite corner. Fed back forward. Can't move it along. Blair Zentz had some trouble, as now it's moved back along by Jordan Clark. Played out here. 
Adrian Birdie looks up ice. Can't find anyone to pass to. Circles back behind his own net. Birdie passes across. Zents trying to move it up the board. Still in between his skates. He's battling there. And now the puck will pop out. Birdie gets it back to the blue line where Powell takes it. Powell fires up and into the netting. So we'll have a break in play here with 2.15 to go. So. I think the big thing I've seen so far, John, <laughs> is the, the Watertown goals have come in transition. And, and I think that, you know, it's important. I, I see that the enforcers are starting to clean that up a little bit. They certainly are. And uh, we'll have to see what they're able to figure out in between periods as well. Uh, Watertown certainly came out and got the jump. You hope that the enforcers will be able to turn broken up here. Hudson, like, he's into the right in front. Another attempt chopped down like a cherry. Puck was covered up, though. In the crease as well. Tried to get there, just was unable to do so as Walters. It's Walters. It's working it across. Babian will chase. Babian fires it. This, or Michaelis, excuse me, trying to work it through. Change. Nathan Pellegra being pulled right up, back out as apparently he was offside. First period. As again, Wolves turn it back into the offense. A pile of boxes of zone. Around this is Deja right back to the Wolves defense. Another, another oh. kick saved there by passing. Six foot five in the first 20 minutes left to go. And Steve, so far, uh, in all, happy with the effort. Our town gets on the board quickly with those two goals. And like period went on, they get a goal on the board. And you know, what was uh, two nothing now, all of a sudden, two one looking a lot better here for the second period. Well, and a lot of credit to Yanni Scropolis. So what a goal! He's been a bulldog him. out there, he certainly has. You like to see that, and we'll have to see how it works out going forward. But you never know. The enforcers have really uh, pulled off something special last year, and they want to do it again this year. That being said, we're going to take a short break here. We'll be back with the first intermission report. You're listening to Elmira Enforcers Hockey on Mixler.com. Home opening weekend is Friday, October 25th, and Saturday, October 26th. Friday, October 25th, it's opening night, and meet the team following the game. Saturday, October 26th, it's Domestic Violence Awareness Night and a special tribute with special jerseys to honor Kelly Sage. Get your tickets early. Call 734-PAW. Almira Enforcers. Serve and protect. This is Glenn Patterson with the Almira Enforcers. Did you know that you can celebrate your birthday here at First Arena with the Elmira Enforcers? Birthday should be a memorable event. And with the Enforcers, you'll never forget it. Call today for more details at 607 Enforcers Go. They're great athletes. They can help and win. We think an athlete's committed to making luck for all athletes. They can play for who they are, encourages honesty and teamwork, and makes all sports better. If you can play, you can play. All right, a first period in the books. Back here with the man, Sean Reynolds. Sean, uh, first off, welcome back to Elmira. What's it like to get back out there and put that uniform on again? Uh, it feels great. Uh, all summer long, being away from these guys, being away from the city, it uh, takes a toll on you. You're sitting at home, not doing anything, and then all of a sudden... Uh, it's uh, ready to go, and you get all the excited and all the nerves back, and it's just it's it's a wonderful feeling getting back on the ice with these boys, putting that jersey on. Well, they talk about preseason games being harder to get up for because they obviously don't count the standings. They, you know, aren't showing anything. Obviously, rookie guys have to play their hearts out, get try to make that spot on the team. Uh, you obviously are set in your ways, but how good is it to get back out here against a foe like Watertown, who's been a divisional opponent? Uh, I mean, again, it's it's good. I mean, you get to see a lot of the competition. I mean, they're. They got their guys on their squad that are trying to make the team. We got guys on our squad trying to make the team. So it's, uh, it's a good showing to uh, be able to be out on the ice with them and see what all these uh, young guns got and the new guys bring to the table and they can add what they can add to us. And, you know, we still got to do our jobs. I mean, uh, nobody's job's really safe in this game. But, uh, you know, no, it's, it's great for them to be able to. Uh, obviously, you remember First Arena and what the atmosphere is. Uh, I think us media types. 
the ice and doing our job. And I mean, and when it comes to that type of stuff, that's all you media guys. That's definitely not us. <laughs> Well, as enjoyable as it is for sure, uh, you get out here again. The off season really changes here in the FPHL, maybe more so than anywhere else. Uh, guys switch teams. A lot of guys. We watched the game last night. Uh, Delaware had a bunch of guys from Danville last year, so uh, it's really a diverse atmosphere here. Uh, how does that go into preparation? What do you guys have to focus on this year as opposed to last year? Do you just shut last year completely out? Uh, last year's gone. It's it's over and done with. It's buried. Uh, we have a new year, a uh, new team, new goals in mind. Um, we want to keep in mind how far we went last year, obviously, and uh, and to keep that in consideration. And that's obviously the goal is to return to the finals. But this year, you know, we want to. In regards to last year, like it's over, it's done with players moving on. To game, so I won't get to ask this question for the first regular season. I mean, we'll see. I mean, in hockey and just ensure that the team gets on it so we'll see we'll see what happens here if i can contribute on the scoreboard as long as the team gets a w it doesn't matter well we're looking forward to a lot of w's this year a great team and uh sean we're great glad to see you back in an elmira enforcers uniform thank you so much yeah absolutely it's good to be back thanks sean all right uh sean reynolds certainly uh an interesting guy to talk to any time we get the opportunity uh missed a couple things in the uh in the first period so i do want to uh thank you guys so much for sticking with us we've had uh, a little bit of camera issues we think we have a a check on how to fix that for our YouTube fans. So hopefully we'll uh, we'll do the best that we can uh, to improve that. And <laughs> good buddy back at the arena, uh, Mr. Wu himself, Steve Ovens, is uh, had some camera issues early on, so we had to reset. Now we're working with a web. Fun to watch it for us to talk. Welcoming the new dandy breakfast wrap for only four twenty five. Hammer steak wrapped up with cheese and eggs for a great meal and the chance to talk about it. A couple of penalty kills there. Seneca Beverages penalty kills. Seneca Beverages reminding you not responsibly. The enforcers, Troy Passingham, going to leave the game after 20 minutes. Uh, uh, not the percentage you want for sure. Uh, you hope to see a little bit more positive, and we saw that from uh, Yanni Skropolis. Get in there and make everything a uh, goal of the season. And uh, certainly trying to earn his spot on this job of that there in the first period. Let's continue. Of course, we'll get to the uh, favorite part. Some of our sponsors where we thank each and every one of them in the second intermission here to a little bit off of trying to get everything done here with the camera work and everything else so huh we certainly uh appreciate everybody on youtube sticking with us this is our first attempt at this on a uh a visiting visiting rotation as there was a little trouble with the mixler side so we got mixler back we got youtube back and we thank every single one of you for sticking with us through some uh some issues here to begin and get the season off on the right handle so, uh, camera setup, but calm, cool behind the bench. It's interesting to see, especially uh, Ahmed Mafusa's reaction. And, you know, and uh, letting a little bit about it. And uh, what we, we saw when he was injured and, and how that term rallying the troops because right next <laughs> to him as say, well. Yeah. And Glenn Patterson managing the defense, he has been. Uh, he has been pretty great. So, uh, you know, he's certainly a big presence back there on the defense for the enforcers. And you like to see that uh, when you get out like Glenn Patterson back, that, that certainly helps, uh, especially when you're looking for somebody who eats up a lot of minutes because Glenn Patterson certainly does a lot of that. No doubt, no doubt about it. Um, you know, he's one guy that, you know, on these two penalty kills that we've seen, it's been nice to see the defense, you know, try to kill those off. I mean, they did get the... The one power play goal, sure, but, you know, that second power play, they really shut things down. JT Walters took over there, and, man, can, can you just imagine here as, as we get ready to kick off the season, you've got a healthy JT Walters. You've got big Glenn Patterson in the lineup. You know, things are going to be looking good for the enforcers. Well, maybe someone who gets undermentioned, Nathan Pelegra was hurt a oh. lot since he came over. Yeah. Just seeing him here tonight, the speed that he, can, he does possess and the way that he can work, quite an interesting feat uh and what we'll be seeing from a guy like nathan pellegra absolutely he's kind of been all over the ice tonight 
Uh, you know, he's he, <laughs> in football terms, they say the kid's got a nose for a football. Well, he's got a nose for the puck. You know, it seems like everywhere does. the puck was, Pellegro was tonight. And I'm trying to get a look at the uh, the netminder across the way here to see uh, who exactly is going to start period number two. As we said, three goaltenders made the trip. Three goaltenders are dressed. Troy Passingham finished his night off. Uh, won't have the ability to get the win if the enforcers can indeed come back and uh, make progress here. But uh, he certainly had a good outing. 12 shots, two goals. It's not a bad way to uh, to get started here. Especially for first official on ice action uh, for the season. Uh, you know, th this this preseason game is uh, is a great tune up. And I imagine uh, for being the net minder, that's got to be a good tune up for yourself as well. You know, to really see things at a fast game pace. And we, we talked about last year, we started on the road three straight weekends. Uh, you never really get the feel of home. And Steve, you were all about the home opener coming up on Friday. Uh, of yep. course, you know, it, it, it's a, it makes a difference to have that experience where it's not your first game. It's not the first time you've seen pucks at that pace. It's not the way that, uh, you know, it's played in practice. So to get a preseason game under your belt, to have the opportunity to feel the puck, to get things moving, certainly could benefit passing him in the long long stand. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. And this guy, you know, he he played like a veteran last year, man. I mean, he just he did such a great job all season long for us. Had that stretch of games where he had to sit with, you know, nursing an injury, getting ready for the playoffs. But uh, he is, certainly looks like he's going to be able to come out of the, the gate strong. On Friday night for the opener at the Loud House, uh, less than 1,000 tickets left. Friday, October 25th. You're going to want to be at the first arena downtown Elmira for the home opener against those dreaded Carolina Thunderbirds. Certainly uh, no one will forget the championship picture taken on first arena ice. You don't want to see that happen yet again. I believe Joseph Murdaka is looking to get the second period uh, start here. As I'm looking across the tunnel, I thought I saw 29 flash there. So Murdaka will take his spot between the pipes for the enforcers as they go into the period of the long change. Uh, certainly a new experience. They didn't feel that very much during the uh, the scrimmage games, if you will. So <laughs> it'll be a, a brand new experience, and we'll have to see how Murdaka can uh, help support these guys. As I I'm going to go out on a limb and say passing him is pretty much, you know, solicited his spot for the home opener. Uh, it's a three-way competition right now, as far as I can tell, with Harvey Murdaka and uh, the other backup netminder, Joseph Young, who uh, comes out of Union College, uh, it's it's certainly going to be an interesting uh, interesting scenario to see how that all plays out. As now, once again, the enforcers are taking to the ice, again clad in those beautiful green jerseys, which are on sale now at the first arena at the merchandise shop, so make sure to get on down there. Mind you, the opening face-off for every period is brought to you by Rob Sweet State Farm Agency on Market Street in downtown Corning. You can visit them on the web where you can bundle home, auto, and life for a sweet hat trick at sweetrob.com. So as Murdaka gets stretched out, we look down at the other side, and it appears I'm still seeing Jeremy Pominville in that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, Pominville for two straight periods, so uh, hopefully the enforcers picked something up on him in the last uh, 20 minutes there. We'll have to see what they can do. Pellegra lining up here for the faceoff. As Pellegra will go back to work here, we'll have to see what the enforcers can do, and we'll try our new uh, camera contraption and see, <laughs> see how well this will work. All right, so Pellegra lines it up. He's going up against Derek Boudreau. Pellegra will win the draw, circles out, gets over the red line, and dumps down in deep. Pellegra on his horse. I just talked about his speed, and you're seeing it on display right now. Back to Yarwood. Moves it back down deep. Again, it's played low. Picked up this time by Connor Fries. Fries still chopping at it, having some trouble getting possession as it's broken back out the other way by Boudreau. Passes across. Works back through the zone. Kalinin pushes it in the corner, but no further, as the enforcers pick back up and try to move it back out the other way. Again, Elmira loses control. Powell passes across. The shot is deflected wide, and Cameron Yarwood's going to chase this one down. Yarwood looking up towards Sean Reynolds. He will flip it out to center ice, broken up by Kalinin, and picked off one more time as Bryce Martin works it back out. Martin circles back into his own zone. Circling again, he has a stick wrapped around him, but still no penalty called as the Wolves will work it back towards the center of the zone. Picked off, moving it around. Kalinin having some trouble. Murdaka makes the save, his first action of the night. 
So again, the puck will be moved back around and the Wolves keep possession for the moment. Now it's moved out by the enforcers. Having some trouble was Michaelis, uh, or Michaelis, excuse me, as the puck is moved back to Powell. Powell has that one chopped away briefly by Reynolds, unable to keep the zone. Michaelis moves it back towards his defense and Cameron Yarwood will turn and chase. Yarwood sends it back up the boards. Trying to chase it back down is Michaelis. A big hit coming there as the enforcer starting to lay the body, Willie Dagno. As Dagno kicks the puck forward, still pushing forward. He's chasing it. That one's going to get away and unable to keep the zone as it's moved back out by Michaelis. Sends back to the point to Jordan Clark. Passes along again. Moved up by Adrian Birdie. Back to Clark. Clark circling in his own zone. Taking his time while the enforcer's got a line change. As one more time, Clark turns it around. Back behind his own net. Passes along. Moving it back out to Adrian Birdie. Passes up. Deflected into the offensive zone. And played back through by the Watertown Wolves. Wolves moving it out. This is Kochkin. He has taken off the puck roughly there by the enforcers. Picked back up here by Clark. Clark looking up ice. He sends a long feed there. Was looking for Scropless. It hit the boards and was broken up by the Wolves. Now it's moved out. Enforcers into the offensive zone. Breaking in a shot and saved again. What a move by Pominville as he is looking sharp down here. This, of course, Pominville's second period of action. That one's moved back and forces defense trying to play catch, but the Wolves break it up. Another shot kick save there by Murdaka. Picks back up and moved along here. Puck is moved back up the sideboards. As chasing after it was Dustin Pierce. That'll still be kept by the Wolves as Blair Zentz will chase it up the far sideboards. Zentz gets it out to center ice. The Wolves pick it back up and Powell turning it back around. Again, shoved into the zone where Murdaka will play. Murdaka puts it back behind the net. Played there. Birdie moves it along and up. Zentz passes to Shafara. Shafara over the red line into the zone. Firing and blockered down again. Picked up one more time by Zentz. Zentz circles behind the back side of the net. Has the puck taken off of his stick. And stick was tied up down there by Zentz. Picked up here by Babian. Babian shoved into the corner again. Still more issues for the enforcers. Keeping the puck moving in the offensive zone. Wolves will break it back out. Pelegra unable to keep. This one should be icing. And it will be as Walters goes back to touch. So the enforcers, uh, <laughs> three minutes and a half into the second period of play, and they have not found that offensive zone pressure yet, Steve. No, they have not. As we are having uh, some better stability there from the camera, and I do appreciate it. Thank trying. You. We're trying here. As Pelegra comes out to take the draw, he will push it back. Reynolds picks up. That one's poke checked away from him, and the Wolves will break it back out the other side. Picked off and moved forward again by the enforcers. Still struggling to keep the forward pressure as going all the way back now is Yarwood. Yarwood picks up. Looks up the ice. Reynolds was trying to pick it off, but Powell will push it back into the enforcer's zone where Pelegra picks up and puts it back into the Wolves end of the ice. This one will be jumped on by the netminder Pominville and we'll have a faceoff down in the offensive zone. Unfortunately, it's been one and done for the enforcers. That's really got to be the message on the bench from Ahmed Mafus is you can't have those situations. You have to continue to play in the offensive zone and keep working the puck. We'll see if the enforcers are able to do that. The Wolves do get a line change here. A little bit of an interesting situation in the preseason because we talked about the familiarity as the puck is won back. Yarwood dumps it back down deep and the enforcers trying to go back to work broken up by Powell. So to finish that thought... <laughs> The assistant coach last year from the championship run, now head coaching the Watertown Wolves, is coming in a fire, and that one goes just wide. Wolves just unable to uh, score their third goal of the night. Very, very close as Murdaka gets saved by an errant puck. So Powell picks back up, fires it forward, and again, the puck is worked into the zone. Fired and up into the netting, so that will be out of play and an offensive zone faceoff for the Wolves. So as I was saying, <laughs> for the third time now, the uh, head coach of the Watertown Wolves was the assistant coach for Elmira last year, and his recognition of the team, of course, what would usually be the team, somewhat less important when you consider the amount of new players. So, now that I've finally gotten that out, it only took three times there, Steve. Two to one score, 15.37 to go in the second period, and the enforcers looking to bounce back here. Scropolis picks it up, tries to move it along, puck taken away from him. Shove back down behind the net, JT Walters will move it along. Again, the enforcers having some trouble getting possession, and once they get it, keeping possession. The Wolves turn it back around again. 
Wolves in their own zone, trying to move it along. Poke checked there away. Willie Dagno was trying to get on it. But moving back up is Kochkin. Kochkin over the blue line looking. He avoids a hit there, a big hit attempted by Michael Michaelis. Excuse me. Scropolis now gets over the red line, dumps it in. The enforcers will go for a change as Michaelis continues to chase. That puck gets back out to the blue line and more physicality. Now a fight breaking out down there back behind the net as Igor Babian really letting loose. I'm not sure what led up to this, but Babian was throwing haymakers and it doesn't even look like the Wolves player got his glove off. Not much of a fight there, I guess, but Babian will be taken and it looks like Marvin Powell was the well less of a combatant but he certainly took the brunt of it. So Yarwood heading over, possibly to get the explanation. <laughs> they took Babian right off the ice. I'm not sure what transpired to get that going, but Babian certainly was, uh, was not going to take whatever it was. So here's the discussion. Yarwood chatting with Powell. As the referees, I think, are still trying to sort things out. Babian with 14.55 to go in the second. They took him right to the locker room. I have to assume. Yeah. I, I have to assume he's done. That wasn't an escort to the box. That no. was an escort right to the dressing room. And Marvin Powell goes in. So Powell has two minutes up on the board at the moment. All right. I'm completely confused now. <laughs> Like I said, Steve, I didn't see what led up to it. No, I didn't either. But, I, I mean, Babian certainly got the advantage. <laughs> we got to give him that. But I, uh, he was taken right to the locker room. He has got to be done for the night, I would assume. I mean, I, I'm not sure. Obviously, oh, there goes five minutes now is up on the board for Babian. And the two minutes have come down. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I guess we'll wait for the official announcement. There's a five-minute penalty up on the enforcer's side of the board. So everything has been sent back to each side. Ahmed Mafus will now get the report from Cameron Yarwood. As I, I, I have to assume each... I'm guessing each player got five for fighting. And then I'm guessing... Let's see. So Babian got two instigating, five fighting, a game misconduct for being the aggressor. Watertown got two minutes roughing. So the two minutes cancel out. Well, my mother always told me it took two to fight, so I'm not sure how you get a five-minute fighting penalty on one side. I mean, yes, the fight was one-sided. <laughs> but uh yeah call me peculiar as now five minute power play and the enforcers who were good earlier on are going to have to replicate that effort right here again Powell has possession of the puck he moves it down deeper right back to Powell at the point Powell feeds it across another attempt shot and a save there by Murdaka that one ripped off there by Derek McPhail. Puck moved back out again. Looking, firing. That one goes wide of the net. A whistle is blown as the net came off its moorings. So quite the shot there from Michael Desjardins. Dar excuse me, Michael Desjardins. Still trying to get some of these names down, folks, as uh, just getting started here in the new season. And, of course, a preseason game, so a lot more names than, uh, than are usually needed. As once again, Powell will take possession. Powell passes along. Desjardins passes across. A shot. Kick save there by Murdaka. Another save by Murdaka. And what a save that one was. Buck is fed back out through center ice. And Powell will have to chase it all the way back. Enforcers get a line change. Almost a full minute into their five-minute penalty kill. Again, this penalty kill brought to you by Seneca Beverages. Reminding you not to get boxed by drinking responsibly. Another attempt here for the Wolves as they try to get set up in the zone. Pass all the way across to Powell. Powell firing it towards the center of the ice. Broken up. Yanni Skropolis getting in there. Trying to get things going. He sends it back to the point. Picked off there by Powell. Passed across over to Licky. 
Licky moves it down lower. Kalinan will dump as the cycle commences here for the Watertown Wolves. Looking, winding up, firing, save there by Murdaka. And now Scropolis fires it to the blue line and just out of the zone. So the enforcers a little relief there. As now again, Powell circles back into his own zone, looking forward. Powell fires across, pick back up, and the Wolves start back towards the neutral zone. They are a minute and a half into a five-minute penalty kill, broken up at the blue line and sent all the way back down. Great play by Cameron Yarwood, and the enforcers will change again. Well, you lose a quarter of the period here to this penalty kill, unfortunately, as now the enforcers will have less time to try to mount the comeback, trailing only by a goal at this point. Murdaka certainly looking solid back there in net for the moment, Steve. Yeah, you like to see that from Murdaka here. He has made some big saves. As now again, Puck will go around the boards. Applying pressure is Michaelis. Puck is rolled back down below the goal line as the Wolves try to get it set up. Back to the point one more time. Fed down low. Looking for a lane. Again, some trouble as the puck goes back to Powell. Powell down to the sideboards and again, trouble getting things going as Munirov could not get the puck onto his stick. Now it's back to Powell. Powell firing in front and that one goes into the net. I believe that one was tipped in front by Munirov as that brings it down to 2 minutes, 28 seconds. And because it's a major power play, that will not end it. Yep. So the enforcers now trailing three to one. Certainly not the start they wanted. As now Almira will go right back to center ice and hope that they can come back here after killing. They still have to kill off this penalty kill. That's been the unfortunate part. As now, once again, the power play has really killed the enforcers up to this point. So the puck down deep into the zone. Playing it out there was Bryce Martin. It's moved all the way back down, and Pominville will pick it up. Pominville drops it back behind. As once again, circling back deep is Austin Petrie. Looking around. The enforcers break it up at center ice. Scropolis picks it up. Scropolis, the lone goal scorer here for the enforcers to this point. Puck has moved along and into the offensive zone. Here comes the enforcers. Well short a man, by the way, as it's taken away three wolves on one enforcer, and those odds are not going to work very well. So the wolves will pick it back up. Again, trying to work it back through and out of their defensive zone. Still some tough play there by the enforcers. Willie Dagno going to work. As the wolves now pick it up, move it along the other side. This is Aiden Riley. He gets it into the enforcer zone, immediately turn back around. Enforcers get it all the way back down, and the Wolves have to come 200 feet. A minute and 15 seconds to go on the power play. Some contact there as Dagno was trying to get around the goaltender, Pominville, just had limited success at doing so. So the puck moved into the offensive zone again by the Wolves. Wolves trying to come through the zone, a little bit of trouble as they can't break to the front of the net. Drop for Powell. Powell, top of the circle. Goes across. Another attempt. Shot. And that one bounces wide again. JT Walters has possession. Trying to work it out of the zone. Here comes Walters. Over the blue line. Three on three. Back the other way. Enforcers coming. Shot over the top of the net. And Walters wants that one back. Another attempt here by Pellegra. He sends it back towards the point where Sean Reynolds just dumps it back deep. 33 seconds to go in the power play. Enforcers did allow a goal on this one, so the goal separated, separation now is two. As cutting back through, Reynolds chops at it. Michaelis couldn't come up with it. Again, passed across. Another save by Murdaka. And again, as Murdaka jumps on top of it, I have to say, he has been sharp. More pushing and shoving back behind the net now. This time getting to it. Looks like Bryce Martin was... Getting well, tangled up a little one bit. One of there. the Watertown players tried to go after Murdaka, and Bryce Martin was having none of it. And you like to see that from perspective defensemen, that's for sure, as they're not going to tolerate any wiggle room around Troy Passingham or Joseph Murdaka at the moment. We'll have to see what the... Oh, now we do get a goaltending change. So the Watertown Wolves will bring in a second goaltender. I believe that's former enforcer Blake Scott down there. As now again, the Wolves go right back to work here. Six seconds to go on the power play. Powell couldn't keep the zone. That will do it. 
So once again, puck is dumped in deep. Enforcers will chase it down. Playing it back in the corner there was Bryce Martin. Martin pushes it forward. Scropolis trying to move it out of the zone. Yarwood passes ahead. Couldn't hit Dagno. Dagno really jumping. Dagno definitely had him beat, and the referee calls icing. Poor call. Even the Watertown Wolves defenseman making comments. Dagno is not going to take much, though. We saw Dagno at the pro placement camp drop the gloves with Ahmed Mafus. So I'll tell you what, if he's not scared to go with Foos, he's not scared to go with anybody on this no. Watertown team. So, and I think for some of the fan base, that was the talk of, uh, of camp this week. <laughs> it certainly was. So, the faceoff will now come to the right-hand side of Murdaka. As with 9.37 to go in the second period, it's a 3-1 to one score. Cameron Yarwood pushes it back. Chasing it around. This is Bryce Martin. Passes up. Dagno passes up to Michaelis. Michaelis looking, stick handling and shooting, but that one's going to come all the way out. Unable to play it as he hopped off the bench was Jordan Clark. Didn't want to get called for too many men as the enforcers have been the only ones on the uh, penalty kill here tonight. So once again, back the other way, a shot and a save there by the former enforcer, Blake Scott. That will take us to the timeout. We will be right back. You're listening to Elmira Enforces Hockey here on Mixler.com. This is JT Walters with your Elmira Enforcers. I love getting out in the community here in Elmira, but I also know it can be hard to find things to do. We at the Enforcers have a great fix for that. With deals for groups of 10 or more, Enforcer games can be a great and affordable time for you and your friends to come out and enjoy downtown Elmira. Go Enforcers, go. This is Kyle Stevens of your Elmira Enforcers. Coming to an Enforcer game is pretty sweet, but getting to sit high atop the building and having catered food brought is only available in first arena suites. Whether it's a small group or a big party, we can set you up. There are still a few nights left available, but call now so you don't get shut out. The number is 607-734-7825. Go Enforcers, go. The Elmira Enforcers home opening weekend is Friday, October 25th and Saturday, October 26th. Friday, October 25th, it's opening night and meet the team following the game. Saturday, October 26th, it's domestic violence awareness night and a special tribute with special jerseys to honor Kelly Stage. Get your tickets early. Call 734 pa Elmira Enforcers. Serve and protect. All right, and with that, we are back. Steve, uh, got to look for something positive here for the Enforcers out of this last 10 minutes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, they've got nine minutes left here in uh, period number two. As now, once again, the puck is attempted to be dumped back in the zone, but the Wolves come away with it and come back out the other side. Aiden Riley has it as that one shot in and covered up by Joseph Murdaka. So we'll have to see... Uh, what the enforcers can do here. Obviously, uh, we see the talk going on <laughs> on the YouTube side, obviously getting to look at some newer guys, getting to see what they can do, making those final cuts. Uh, obviously, um, we'll have to see what they can do here in these last 30 minutes of game time as the puck is moved around. Blair Zentz is going to pick up. He feeds wide, finds Dustin Pierce. Pierce into the zone, looking, firing. Kick save there by Blake Scott, and the puck is moved off the board again. Picked back up by Adrian Birdie. Back in his own zone. Passes up ahead. Once again, Dustin Pierce over the red line, dumping back in. Enforcers will make a line change. Blake Scott couldn't handle the puck back behind his own net. And the Wolves will try to break out the other side. Pelegra overskated, unfortunately, as now it's broken up again, but picked back up by Marvin Powell. Puck is dumped in and skating after it, Jordan Clark. Clark trying to pass it along. Having some trouble. As Pelegra digging for it, Pelegra will come away with it. Eight minutes and five seconds to go in the second period of a three-to-one game. Here comes Sean Reynolds. Reynolds shooting, blocked down, another shot, and again blocked down. Blake Scott coming up with two big saves on Sean Reynolds, and that is never easy to do. Wolves making their way out of the zone, trying to find a way back into the enforcer zone and apply more pressure. Kalinin tries to rip a shot off. That one blocked away as, again, the enforcers battling in their defensive end. Enforcers take possession of the puck, looking northbound. As coming back through one more time, this is going to be Bryce Martin. He feeds up to Sean Reynolds, as we said, never an easy guy to stop. Shot right off of the leg pad, back to Yarwood, trying to feed it in front. 
That one broken up and out the other way come the Wolves as Jamie Lucas gets in the offensive zone, fires it way wide of the net, and out with it comes Sean Reynolds. Flipping back towards center ice as going all the way back this time, Scott looking for icing, the linesman saying, I don't think so. As once again, puck is moved back through, out to the offensive zone for the Wolves. Here's Austin Petrie. Petrie looking, feeds it in front, broken up, kicked back out, and back to the neutral zone as Boris Kochkin could not come up with the puck. 6.52 to go in a 3-1 to one second period. So, puck moving back out quickly. Watertown Wolves trying to come up with some more offense here. They came away with a 6-1 to one win last night. Of course, they did have to uh, go on two penalty kills of their own. They have yet to see the box alone by themselves here tonight. Only the uh, matching minor penalty they've had so far. So now the Elmira Enforcers trying to work it out. Yanni Skropolis, the only goal scorer for the Enforcers thus far, dumps the puck back in. Giving chase as Pierce can't come away with it as the Wolves will try to work it back out. Kept at the blue line by the Enforcers, now moved out by Watertown. Wolves breaking back towards the offensive zone. Koshkin dumps it in. Murdaka, again, he's been impressive here in the second period, Steve. Yes, he has. He's been uh, diving out for some saves, reaching out, doing what he's got to do. And does it again right there yes, with the does. glove. As now, once again, Shafara moves the puck along as Powell will try to turn it back around. Kalinin has it. Not taking the body there. A little surprising. Not quite what I'd call enforcer hockey. As once again... Playing it back. Powell has it. Dumping it back in. Hits the backside of the net. And now the puck shoved in the corner, but the Wolves are going to come away with it. Working towards the front. Kalinin goes down to a knee. Still can't come away with it. As now, a little bit of pushing and shoving here in front of the net after the whistle. Uh, of course, Kalinin was going for the net. Ran into Murdaka and had some trouble as Murdaka went down. And in doing so, he shoved the uh, net off its moorings. So, 5.29 to go in period number two, Steve. You know, you take that five-minute penalty into account, and in what we've seen here over the course of these last four minutes, man, maybe three and a half minutes, seems like we've been playing a lot of defense. Got to put the hammer down here. Got to lay on the throttle a little bit if you're in the enforcers. For sure. And the enforcers trying to move it back towards the offensive zone. Nathan Pellegra battling for it. Like to see the uh, the speed and the jump out of Pellegra far here. Murdaka turns it aside. Puck is moved back up. Sent back towards the neutral zone. Pelegra couldn't get his stick on it as Powell turns it back for the Watertown Wolves. Moving into the zone, Jamie Lucas. Lucas was cut off there quickly. And now Reynolds trying to come away with the puck. He and Pelegra both digging. There's four players all ramped up there. Yarwood just took something up high. And now we'll go fighting for the puck as it goes back up the near side boards. Picked back. Puck is dumped back deeper by the Wolves. Still nothing available in front. A little bit of a takedown. Maybe the enforcers got away with one there. As now Reynolds passes across, moved into the offensive zone, broken up right at the blue line. Pelegra picks up, passes back onto the sticker Reynolds. Reynolds drops it down in the corner, and that whole line will get a change here. Four and a half to go in period number two. The enforcers still down by two as they're slowly losing time here in the second period. Powell will dump in. JT Walters turns his back and chases after. Walters has it. He's out there with Sherman Lovett now, the first draft pick for the Enforcers out of the July free agent camp. Solan Shafara will dump it back in. Puck is picked up there. You see all five Wolves very quickly back, looking almost Maple Leaf-esque in their defensive structure. Puck is moved along, right back to the point. Big windup shot and over the top of the net. Picked up there and again moved along. Shafara having some trouble as he can't quite keep the puck moving forward so puck going back played back in their own zone this is petrie trying to move it along it's broken up there by scropolis scropolis feeds it ahead had some trouble getting it through to pelegra as now the wolves working in their own zone looking for an outlet they get it back to center ice picked off there by jt walters walters circles back behind his own net now still trying to take time off as kalinan was right on top of him Pat back here, JT, tries to find a lane, still being harassed there by the Wolves' offense. Pass to the sideboards. Now here comes Nathan Pellegra. See those legs stretch a little bit? He gets it to the slot, takes it right through. Now he looks back towards the defense, passes across. Shot coming quickly, right down in front. Another attempt shot, and couldn't bury it. Wide open net for Dustin Pierce, and he couldn't put it home. 
as now again, Pellegra chasing after. Sent back to Clark out in the neutral zone. Fed back in, and the Wolves will pick it back up behind their own net. Three to one lead for the Wolves, and we're getting down to it here under three minutes to go. As now again, Powell back behind his net. Feeds it up the sideboards. Broken up there by Hudson Michaelis. Michaelis gets into the zone. Had to wait for his teammate to get on side. Michaelis just about being tackled by two Wolves there. Michaelis loses control of his stick. As now he'll have to go back and chase it. Jordan Clark stopped the forward momentum momentarily. Now it's flipped right at Hudson Michaelis. Michaelis looking up ice. Passes all the way across. Picked back up here by Birdie. Fed back to the neutral zone. Enforcers have three on two if they hurry. And one makes a line change. Right back out in front. Another shot. And laid loose for a second. Michaelis unable to tuck it home. Big save there by Blake Scott. Yeah, he really had to dive out and lay right out on his stomach to make that save. The enforcers certainly showing uh, a lot of why they were so good offensively last year. Need to find a way to finish the play, however. That's going to be the big key to the uh, last 22-plus minutes of this one. As the puck rolls around, pick back up, firing, a save by Scott. Scott, a little bit of issues with rebound control. That's kind of been his M.O. basically since last year. Uh, was one of the reasons Blake Scott was kind of a backup goaltender for Elmira, but came up to Watertown and really cemented himself an offensive, or excuse me, a starting role towards the end of the season. Didn't see him as much in the playoffs. Certainly uh, had had some other goaltending prospects for the Wolves at that point. But, uh, Blake Scott certainly earned his fair share of starts as he stops another one. And he is getting ripper. peppered here in well, the last minute. And that's been the trouble for the enforcers. They have not been able to get those shots on goal and the offensive zone pressure. As once again, might have to uh, amend things here in just a moment. As now, once again, another shot coming. The Enforcer can't quite get it through. As one more time, Enforcers will circle back into their own zone. This puck is passed forward, and the Enforcers chasing it down yet again into the offensive zone. Just have not been able to set up down there, however. As the Wolves look to move out the other way. Shot fired down into the corner. As now, once again... Puck is moved up and all the way down. This should be icing. No, they wave it off. Yarwood will go back and pick it up. So up to Michaelis. Passes off to Scropolis. Scropolis dumps it deep into the zone. And apparently, uh, I was just corrected here. I was under the impression it was goalie Blake Scott. It was actually goalie Joe Young. So apparently a trade must have been made between the Enforcers and the Wolves. Enforcers had Joe Young in camp. And he's certainly uh, showing... He's done a very good job so far here tonight. As now, picked up a penalty upcoming. This one, hold on, the Wolves touched it. Does that mean the Wolves have their first penalty kill of the night? It looks like it might. Enforcers will go on their first power play of the evening. And uh, Steve, that's one of my favorite moments. It's a LaBella power play. LaBella yeah. reminding us we are powered by partnership. Well, it's going to take a lot of partnership here by the enforcers <laughs> to get one in the net here as uh, Joe Young has been, you know, peppered with shots here in the last two and a half minutes. Hasn't had one that's gone uh, in yet. Uh, let's see what Elmira can do. As Pellegra will win the drawback, gets it to Cameron Yarwood. Yarwood sends it back down. Michaelis passes down deeper for Pellegra. Pellegra feeds out to Yarwood, passes across. Big windup shot, kick save there by Young. As the puck is moved all the way back around, nobody on that far side blue line as Yarwood goes back to get it. Yarwood feeds Reynolds, passes across. Here comes Pellegra, dumping it back in the zone. As coming back in, having some trouble, Pellegra will come away with it. Pellegra looking, trying to find a lane. Looks back towards the point, drops it there for Hudson Michaelis. Michaelis shooting, that one tipped in front. Reynolds feeds it back in front, still having trouble. Another shot and blocked away again by Young. That will do it for the period. So the enforcers go down by yet another goal, but they will come back for the third period with a minute 20 to go on the man advantage. Still not bad play from the enforcers. You take away that five-minute period of penalty kill, and they really did a good job uh, throughout the period. They just got to find a way to execute and finish in the third. And they're going to have to come out firing in the third period because they're going to have the man advantage for a minute and 20 seconds to start the third period. So 
it's not going to be a third period that you can just kind of come out and, and get those first couple minutes on your legs. You're going to have to come out firing. And we'll have to see if they're able to do that. We'll be right back here on Mixler.com with the second period intermission report. And at the Decker Agency, we've got over 34 years experience in helping our clients get the best insurance coverage possible. We're local and we're trusted. We've built our business on the idea that customers should be treated like family. At the Decker Agency, we offer free quotes and consultations. Our clients can build their coverages to best suit their needs and budget. Please stop into our office at 416 East 14th Street in Elmira Heights or call us at 607-734-1100 to schedule your free consultation today. And like the Mary and M. Decker Agency LLC on Facebook, at the Decker Agency, we help you protect what matters most. Hello, this is Ahmed Mahfouz, captain of your Elmira Enforcers. If you're looking for something to do when the enforcers are on the road, come on down to the rec rink and take part in the rock and skate. It's a great night out with friends, family, and other great enforcers fans. At just $5 for admission and $5 for skate rental, it's a real power play every Friday night, 8 to 10 p.m. Go enforcers, go. This is Glenn Patterson with the Elmira Enforcers. Did you know that you can celebrate your birthday here at First Arena with the Elmira Enforcers? Birthday should be a memorable event, and with the Enforcers, you'll never forget it. Call today for more details at 607-734-7825. Go Enforcers, go. Two periods of play in the books down here with the first overall draft selection from the July free agent camp. Sherman, love it. Sherman, uh, first off, welcome to Elmira. How are you enjoying it here? I'm loving it so far. Just uh, working hard and just trying to get a spot here. Training camp's always kind of an interesting time of year. Uh, get the chance to kind of see a bunch of talent and try to figure out what makes a championship team. What are you guys doing to try to form that team right from the get-go? We're working on systems right away. We're practicing at full speed right away. And uh, we we know that it means business to be here, and we're all working hard to stay. You had the experience of working with Coach Clark during the uh, free agent tryout camp. Uh, he obviously was up there in Toronto with you guys. Uh, what was the experience when you got here? What made it a little different? Uh, there was no difference. Uh, he, he likes what he likes, and he says that, you know, go hard, go hard, and that's what he came here to do, and uh, I just try to do my best every night. We talked about, uh, obviously, free agent camp. We've talked about this being a preseason game now. Preseason games seem to mean just a little bit more uh, when you're trying to earn that spot. What does it take to, A, earn the spot, and, B, to be successful here in the preseason? Uh, we we got to be very physical. we got to be relentless, and we got to be a team that no one wants to play against here. So as long as we have a hard work ethic and when, uh, we just skate hard, we should be able to get the W here. And that's all we care about is winning here. Well, winning against an in-state rival, always a big, uh, big accomplishment. Uh, when you come in against Watertown, especially, who had a playoff team last year as well, uh, the enforcers met them in the first round. Uh, is there anything extra from the guys who came back from last year that they could tell you and get you ready for this game? They just told me that any man can win, any man can lose in this game. And we just got to play every day like, you know, we're fighting for a job. And uh, that's all that I got from them. And they just told me to go there with my head up high, play hard, and see what happens. All right. Well, before I let you go, one last question. Obviously, you got to Elmira. What's your experience in the city so far with uh, the brief amount of free time you guys have had? <laughs> uh, it's great. I have no complaints. It's, it's a nice small town, and the hockey is the center of it, and that's what I'm, you know, I'm happy I'm here. Well, welcome, Sherman. Love it. We'll be right back here on the Mixler.com Intermission Report. 